When I was doing research a number of years ago for my book, Killer Fish, I was stunned uh, when they looked at the 250 most pristine waters in the world, uh, notably in the North and South Pole, people not living, uh, any marginal amounts of people living there. And every bit of the water had pharmaceutical drugs in it. Do you know what's in your drinking water? A shocking Associated Press investigation found various pharmaceuticals in the drinking supplies of at least 41 million Americans. Tainted water was found from New Jersey to California. The question that right now is on everyone's mind is how in the world did drugs get into our drinking water? New worries tonight about the safety of America's water supply in the first nationwide investigation of its kind the Associated Press found that at least 41 million of us are drinking water that contains traces of prescription drugs. And now many are wondering, is our water safe? Really, whether you need it or not, it's a virtual medicine cabinet in your tap water if you live in many, many areas across the country. There's a scary new report out today. The Associated Press did a, a big uh, amount of research on this, and the findings show that there were traces of prescription drugs in the water supply used by 41 million Americans in some of the biggest cities in the U.S. The list includes over-the-counter pain medication, mood stabilizers, even hormones. The United Nations estimates close to one and a half billion people around the world do not have access to clean drinking water. What about here in the United States? Antiepileptics were found in drinking water of Southern California. A sex hormone was found in San Francisco's water. Three medications and an antibiotic were found in the water supply of Tucson, Arizona. And a mood stabilizer was found in the water of New Jersey. And that's just to name a few. The Associated Press has conducted an extensive investigation into the drinking water in at least 24 major American cities across the country, which contain trace amounts of a wide array of pharmaceuticals. The amounts might be small, but scientists are worried about the long-term health and environmental consequences of their presence in the water supplies of some 41 million Americans. The five-month investigation of 62 metropolitan areas and 51 smaller cities found many drinking water suppliers, including bottled water companies, do not even test for the presence of drugs in the water. The utilities that do test for drugs often don't tell customers about the trace amounts of medications in their water. Pretty, uh, pretty wide range. Here's the drinking water in Washington, D.C. They found six pharmaceuticals in our drinking water here. They include ibuprofen, caffeine, monocin, and about three or four others. In Philadelphia, they had 56 pharmaceuticals or byproducts. They range everything from epilepsy medication to mental health medicines to uh, pharmaceuticals that really run the gamut. In Atlanta, where I am right now, they found that the water contained traces of antibiotics blood pressure drugs, in Cincinnati, cholesterol drugs, they found a trace of one of those, and estrogen that women sometimes take for medicinal reasons. And in New York, cities, they found, New York City, they found a trace of a seizure drug and an anti-anxiety drug. Now, to give you sort of the big picture, how many drugs did they find in the drinking water? In Philadelphia, they found trace amounts of 56 different drugs. In New York City, they found traces of 16 drugs, and in northern New Jersey, 13 drugs. Home filters aren't designed to remove all drugs, and bottled water often comes from the very same source as tap water. Doctor, can you talk about bottled water a little bit? Is that any safer, or how do we know? Well, you know, if, if you could buy bottled water in some country besides the United States, you'd know, because other countries put a label on their water that says, you know, how much calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, mm -hmm. fluoride it has in it, bromine and trace minerals. In our country, they tell you how much fat there is in your water and whether or not it's got any sugar in it. Well, this is a food label that the water companies resisted putting a bottled water label on it because they don't want to tell you. We've gone through and measured a bunch of waters and uh, Whole Foods, just about the same as tap water in terms of fluoride. Uh, how about Trader Joe's? Yep, same as tap water. Well, how about Arrowhead? Same as tap water. So, might as well just take a hose and fill up the thing, put a lid on it, and sell mm -hmm. it. What do you think? So, we got terrible labels, and we've got companies that are willing to take advantage of that. You know, nice, clean-looking label, and mm -hmm. basically it's junk water. We were aware that there was some research, uh, mostly in specialized technical journals, scientific journals, 
suggesting that there was this uh, group of uh, emerging contaminants and one of the contaminants of most concern were uh, pharmaceuticals in very low amounts. They've only been able to measure these kinds of pharmaceuticals well in the last 10 years or so. And we also were wondering, I'm a former medical writer, we were also wondering about pharmaceuticals in particular as a contaminant because as opposed to traditional contaminants that you find in the water, pharmaceuticals are actually designed to interact with your body. So we wondered if that would pose special concerns and special problems. Psychiatric medications, it's the antibiotics, it's there are um, the, um, one of the most common ones, carbamazepine, is used as a mood stabilizer and an anti-epileptic medication as well. And carbamazepine is found all over the country. And you've got a drugged out population that can't get angry because they're on stinking drugs putting the water in the food. Like bisphenol A, sodium fluoride, lithium, all of it. 50 major cities in 50 states were looked at, and drugs were found in the water of 24 major cities. We're talking 41 million Americans here who drink that water. So what's in the water? Everything from acetaminophen and ibuprofen to mood stabilizers, antibiotics, angina, heart, as well as cholesterol drugs, and even sex hormones. The trouble here, Meek, is that the federal government does not test specifically for pharmaceuticals in the water. And in fact, there is no way to scrub water that is in a treatment plant for pharmaceuticals. And so now we have a situation where states and cities across the country are just starting to realize that there are the remnants of pharmaceuticals in the drinking water. That said, I did a story about four years ago in which we found a river in Colorado, and now we know there are many rivers, in which the fish were turning from male to female. And the reason was because there was too much estrogen in the water. The, the natural female hormone was literally turning male fish into female fish, and the thinking was that this is a canary in a coal mine. So now the question is, what's the impact on humans? At the Stroud Water Research Center in Pennsylvania, they've examined links between waterborne drugs and the feminization of male fish. Essentially, the aquatic organisms are being bathed in these compounds. So. What does it mean when a human drinks water that is contaminated with these same mixtures for uh, decades? It's really unknown. For about a hundred years, we know we're slow learners, uh, for about a hundred years the phosphate fertilizer industry which takes phosphate rock and heats it up with sulfuric acid to make soluble phosphate for fertilizers. The rock is not soluble and to use it as fertilizer you've got to make it into a soluble product. They heat it up with sulfuric acid and that drives off two gases, hydrogen fluoride and silicon tetrafluoride. These two gases decimated the vegetation in the areas of these plants. They crippled cattle. The cattle came down with skeletal fluorosis. We have pictures of this, videotapes of this. And in, in Florida, it damaged the citrus groves in the close proximity of the plants. So after 100 years, they said, whoops a daisy, I think we should remove those toxic gases. So they put a wet scrubber in and all it consisted of was a spray of water. And that spray of water converts these toxic gases into a solution called hexafluorosilicic acid. But the biggest problem is that once you put it in the water supply, it, it absorbs directly through your skin, so what are you going to do? How are you going to bathe the baby? Are you going to, you know, go get bottled water for the baby? Are you going to take a shower? Or are you going to, you know, leave town to take a shower? It's, it's, it's exactly the same problem as the lead problem from exhaust pipes. You know, if you've got, you know, 100 million cars driving around spewing lead, it ends up in everything. It ends up on the soil, it ends up in your hair, it ends up in your lungs. If you've got municipalities putting silicon fluoride in the water, you end up with it in everything. It's in the beer, the, if you buy a local, uh, craft brewery, it's in your pasta, if you go to have lunch at your health food store, it, it's in your rice, if you go to the restaurant and rice dinner, if it's in your bowl of soup, it's in everything. Everything that touches that water ends up contaminated with that silica flora. The Associated Press investigation reveals that nearly every drinking water supply in the country that's been tested for pharmaceuticals tested positive. 24 major metropolitan areas from coast to coast. What turned up? trace amounts of everything from sex hormones to drugs for livestock, anti-seizure medications, prescription painkillers, 
even the antidepressant ingredient in Prozac. I think the most important thing to recognize about fluoride is that it's extremely toxic. It is very active biologically, interfering with many basic biochemical processes, uh, enzymes, G proteins, hydrogen bonds, and so on. So it shouldn't surprise us that there's a wide range of health effects that are attributed to fluoride. But the bottom line is that fluoride is extremely active biologically, that the first opponents of fluoridation going back to the 1950s were biochemists, inclu including scientists like James Sumner, who won a, a Nobel Prize for enzyme chemistry. And incidentally, there is no doubt that fluoride damages health because millions of people in India, China, and parts of Africa have had their health ruined by fluoride. The people have been crippled by fluoride and many other health effects. The argument as far as fluoridation is concerned is, is there an adequate margin of safety between the doses which cause this known harm and incidentally documented in this report by the National Research Council published in 2006. Here a fairly independent balanced panel looked at the literature for three years and in this 507 page report and 1100 references indicated that the EPA safe drinking water standard for fluoridation for fluoride is four parts per million, it's not safe, it's not protective of health and needs to be lowered. How many water suppliers that you spoke to actually filter out pharmaceuticals? Virtually no water supplier we talk to will claim or can claim to entirely filter out pharmaceuticals because the treatment systems aren't designed to filter out pharmaceuticals. In Philadelphia, for example, scientists detected 63 different pharmaceuticals in the untreated watershed and 56 in the drinking water. Just a handful had been eliminated by filtration. The EPA doesn't yet even require water providers to test for them. It's important for people to recognize the kind of public health implications of this kind of medicalization. Oxford professor calls for drugging water supply, and then he says they want to put Ritalin, Prozac, lithium in the water. And here's an ABC News article, bioethicist and media historian Jacob M. Apple, and he's in the New York Times calling for it, and so Big Think's talking about it, and so is the Huffington Post, and they're talking about it like it's good. They're getting the public ready for lithium in the water, which is an antipsychotic. I, I can't even continue here on air right now. I'm so I mean, they're just out in the open. But before I get into the health effects, let me explain my first concern, which remains my top concern. The level of fluoride in mother's milk mother's breast milk, baby's first meal, is extremely low. It's 0 0.004 parts per million. That means a bottle-fed baby in a fluoridated community in the United States, where we fluoridate the water at one part per million, is getting 250 times higher dose of fluoride than a breastfed baby. And that is extremely disturbing. This is a hazardous waste. No question about it. It's not only hexafluorosilicic acid, but it's a lot of crap that Neil was talking about. It's got lead and arsenic and mercury and radioactive isotopes, maybe trace amounts. They can't dump that into the sea by international law. They can't dump it locally because it's too concentrated. But wait for it. If someone buys it from them, it's, it, it, you take away the label hazardous waste and it becomes a product. 